All right, this is Stevie, the 1974 Crown Atomic that I rescued out of the salvage yard up in Idaho. If you'll remember, it sat up there for at least nine years, sitting up to the frame in the sand. So it's dirty, it's a work in progress, but it's time to adjust the clutch. I had no free travel on this, and the clutch was slipping just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is crawl under the bus after I air it up and then block it up. And that's really important. If you are under a bus with air suspension, never get under it in a way where if one of those airbags blows or deflates, you could get crushed. So I aired up the bus, which raised up the back about nine inches. They're pretty big. And then blocked it up back there. So if it deflates while I'm under there, I won't get hurt. So this is an Eaton Tango 905, a T-905 medium duty transmission with a reverse five speed pattern. Just because it's a rear engine bus and the transmission is facing forward. So everything on it shift wise is kind of backwards. So let me show you what I'm doing. So this is the tool I made. Anyway, I keep this in Stevie, the 1974 Crown. And what I did is I just cut off one of the Pittsburgh, you know, this is that Pittsburgh pry bar set. And I cut this off because it's narrow enough to fit into the opening between this cross pipe and into the clutch adjustment area. And it's the right length. Everything else I had, all the punches and chisels were just a little too short. So this stays in the bus. I'll use this for something else. And the hammer is awesome. So let's go under and I'll show you what I did. Yeah, this is tight and I apologize, but I have not seen any videos on this. This is an Eaton Road Ranger. It's a medium duty T like Tom or Tango 905 transmission. And the manual for the transmission didn't show anything about how to adjust the clutch. So I've had to kind of figure this out on my own. I couldn't find these instructions anywhere. Unlike all the other clutches I've worked on where this ring here, oh, where you, ah, sorry about that. Anywhere, unlike every other clutch I've worked on where you either have a bolt or a ring that uh, is turned by the bolt and you're turning this in here, this clutch has a little shaft that extends. It's a threaded shaft. And let me see if I can prop the light up in here. I dropped the light earlier. Then I had to fish it out. That might work. Oh, hell. Okay. So this is a lock ring, that nut. And what I had to do was on this side, pound up to loosen it. And then this ring turns the whole shaft the centerpiece that's in here. And I've got a lot of adjustment. So I had to turn it this way. I don't know if that's clockwise or counterclockwise, depends on which way you're looking at it. But I turned it in a way that lengthens the distance between here and here. And I don't know if you can see, but on the back side of this, there's a bunch of extra threads. So I've got a lot of adjustment on this clutch. That's a great thing. My pedal was all the way up to the top. There was no free travel on the pedal itself. So now I have adjusted this by using my little homemade tool and pushing on that. And now I'm gonna take this lock nut back until it's tight and then tap it in place just to lock the adjustment I've got here. So I'll have to do that because I, I'll have to do that off camera. There's just not enough room in there. All right, back in a minute. Okay, back in the inspection port again. 
So you can see, I don't have a way to do this, sorry. You can see on the, what'll be towards the right, that is the adjustment nut and the one on the left is the lock nut. And then over on the end, on the left end there, past that cutter pin, you'll see thread protruding. So what I did is, uh, you'll see some shiny thread. There's some shiny thread in the middle here because I just exposed that. So I turned, this is the lock nut. So I had to turn it this way to unlock it. And then I turned this nut by putting this pry bar here and pushing up on this side, which is the driver side of this rear engine bus. And then that extended this distance, pushing this part back. And now I will grease the throw out bearing here. I'm trying to find that in the, the camera image. I'll grease the throw out bearing Zerk fitting there, and then I should be done. Right now I've got about an inch and a half or so of pedal free travel before I start to engage the clutch, which is what I want before I had none. All right, did the adjustment and I've got about an, about an inch and a half, I could measure it, but it feels good. So about an inch and a half of free play. And of course that peg there is for resting your foot. You don't want to take the clutch all the way down to the floor except when you're shifting into either reverse or first because if you do that while you're driving you can tear up your clutch brake so now i've got the clutch adjusted and i just moved the bus a little bit felt good so i think we're set anyway that is a quick video on how to adjust the clutch on a t905 eaton transmission kind of an odd duck